How's it going guys? My name is Tavarsh and today, here in my garage, my Lamborghini. Yeah, that joke never ever gets old. Not never. Welcome everyone to the Friday Show where I give you guys an all access pass, a sneak peek if you will, of all my projects, everything going on in my garage, and everything coming up on the channel. And then I'm going to answer some of your questions. But before that, I think I'm going to answer a question that I've been getting a lot from you guys after I posted this clip of myself on my Car Guys Talk podcast. And the question was, what happened to my face? Yeah, my beard was real scruffy when I came back. The reason being, I went to Europe without my shaving kit. I forgot it at home. And even though my hairline was still receding, yeah, my beard was just growing out of control. So by the time I came back, I look like this. And boy was I excited when I came back and this box was waiting on my doorstep, sent by today's sponsor, Dollar Shave Club. So if you're unfamiliar with Dollar Shave Club, it's a really good, really cheap, and really convenient way of looking and smelling your best, especially if you spend all your time in a really hot garage like I do. Dollar Shave Club is basically giving away their daily essential starter set for only five bucks to new members. So here's what five bucks gets you. You have your shave butter, your body wash, and your one wipe Charlies. And if you guys know about these, well, they're basically like magic. So uh, definitely get on this. Also, you have your premium executive razor with a weighted handle. I really like the heft to this. And you also get a full cassette of cartridges. Now, after this first box, replacement cartridges are sent for only a few bucks a month. In addition, Dollar Shave Club also has toothbrushes and toothpaste. So basically you can get everything you need to help you look, feel, and smell your best. Now this $5 offer is available at dollarshaveclub.com slash tav. That's dollarshaveclub.com slash T-A-V. Now let's jump straight into it. This is my 2008 Lamborghini Gallardo Spider and I am super excited to finally have this thing back in my garage. It took a two month hiatus because it needed to get some body and paint work done. And also I went on a eh, short vacation, but this thing looks absolutely stunning. I mean, if you just take a look at the paint work, this was all scratched up and it just really looked not like a $200,000 car should. Also, if you look at the paint on the quarter panels, this was all redone and everything over here. But the main part of this entire paint job was on the other side. It's a little bit tight over there. So uh, you can just refer to the previous video that I did on this car and uh, you can see the awesome work they did over there. There's a carbon fiber piece that they completely redid. This is Euro Car Body Shop in Winter Park, Florida. They did an awesome, awesome job. But what I'm gonna do on this car uh, in the coming week is basically all of this. So this needs to get cleaned up. I need to put the finisher piece on. I also need to install a seat belt, a new seat belt, because if you can see right here, yeah, take a look at that. That is no bueno for a seat belt. Uh, this came like this because this had a fire and uh, this was just fire damage. So I do have another seat belt that I'm gonna put in here so it's nice and safe and we definitely need safety in a car like this. So I have a few priorities on this car. Number one, I wanna protect that paint. So this is getting a full ceramic coat installed next week. In addition, I have to fit everything in the back here and you can see the stock taillights are here, but this finisher piece is not exactly what I need. These stock taillights, I just have them mocked in place so I can get the wiring diagram. I have to make my own wiring diagram because I am installing this. So this is the finisher piece that I need. This was a uh, fiberglass piece that I got on eBay. And I'm gonna put this just to the side. This actually was kind of expensive. So I will be doing a uh, full uh, workup of this. I also have to do a lot of installation. Uh, I have to drill holes and I have to make sure that this is ready to go. But the piece de resistance is this. This is a box containing LP570 tail lights. These are amazing. I love the way these look. This will absolutely transform the look of the car. Now I have two of these tail lights and I have the brackets, but the thing is these need to be wired up because the wiring for this, well, the plug isn't the same as the one on the car. So I have to do my own custom wiring and maybe we can even do something like uh, sequential turn signals, maybe down the line. But right now this is gonna be the awesome project that is coming up on the channel. And after that, we can finally fit this bumper. And the reason why I didn't fit the bumper before I got the body work done is because these exhausts, they don't work with the exhaust I have. The reason why is like, it, it's, it's only a single exhaust. These need duels. And I want to make this thing look a little bit more like OEM, but 
I also want to maybe go a little bit crazy, so uh, I'm still thinking of ways that I can make this space work. Uh, but this is gonna go on right after the tail lights, and this is gonna look really good. After all that, I'm gonna have it go back to the body shop, and they should be able to paint this relatively quickly. Now, I still do have to do the top and uh, make sure all the electrics work, but I think we can get that done in about one or two days. So that's, that's not really a big issue. I have the software necessary to connect it to the computer. I can do dealer level stuff. So if that gets done, then that gets done. And I have all the hydraulic lines and those are ready to go. So this car is basically finished. And when we're finished, then I get it out on, on the road. And then we are going to do a reveal with subscribers uh, at a local meet at the Ace Cafe. And that is just gonna be glorious. I want you guys to see it. I want you guys to hear it because this car isn't just a car that I built in my garage. We all did this together, okay? This is a community effort. You guys helped me along just as much as anybody else, and I really do appreciate it. Thank you so much. So, on to the next one. Oh yeah, this is my 1995 Toyota Supra SE, and it doesn't really look like much right now, and I do apologize for the sound right now. Um, yeah, I'm having a new roof installed, and having a new roof installed is not exactly the most quiet thing in the world, but uh, we will soldier on. So this is a work in progress. I have taken off the vinyl wrap, and you can see, yeah, you can see that it goes down to the bare metal here. Uh, the paint is in really, really poor condition underneath the, that vinyl wrap, and I still have a few panels to do. I think I have to do uh, that panel and that panel, but uh, everything else is removed. And now it's wingless, and a lot of you have been telling me that I should do a wingless setup. I'm not really seeing it. I'm not really seeing it. I like the wing. I like the TRD wing that was on there. And it's not really something that I want to go without. I understand the clean lines of the car, but it's just, it's, it's not doing it for me. So that wing is coming back on there. Also, I have new wheels, new brakes, and most importantly, a new engine. Well, new-ish, because I'm not gonna change that engine. That engine is staying the way it is, except for I'm changing everything in it. So that's gonna be a lot of fun. So right after the Lambo build is done, in about two weeks, this is gonna jump off, and man, we're gonna go flying through this project because everything has been bought. All the parts, I've looked at everything, I've done my research, and we're gonna make sure that we can get this thing rolling as soon as possible, with as much power as possible, because this thing didn't make much power. It made about 120 horsepower to the wheels, which is really, really bad like for an Elantra, but for a Supra, it's not great at all. But on to the daily. This is the 2007 Mercedes-Benz S600 V12 twin turbo, also with a Eurocharged tune, making 600 horsepower, 700 foot-pounds of torque at the crank. And it is definitely a daily driver. I leave this thing outside. You can see that it's just not in the best of shape. I mean, the nature out here, Nature, nature be scary every once in a while, so uh, this, this definitely takes its lumps. Now, if you look around on this side, you'll see that I have some trim missing. This is, I can fix this pretty quickly, but this is gonna be part of a restoration that I'm doing on this car because I wanna make sure that this car is as good as possible. I wanna make this a $160,000 car that I know it can be, that, that it was when it started. God, look at this. These are all love bugs. They died for their love. This thing is an awesome place to be, and I would recommend anybody to pick one up as a daily driver. And you will be seeing this more on my channel, maybe even as a weekend build. And here is my truck. This is my 2000 F350 Super Duty Dually, and I love this thing so much. It is just the best truck in the world because, well, I got it as a really good deal. I got it for 7,500 bucks and it can tow anything. Uh, I have brand new Michelin tires on it and those are just great. But the thing with this truck is that it needs some maintenance. So it has 270 odd thousand miles and I think the stock injectors need a change. I'm not sure if the injectors were ever changed, but they definitely need a change. I wanna up the power. I wanna get this thing around 300 or as close to 300 horsepower as I can because 300 horsepower in a diesel means more than 600 foot pounds of torque. That is plenty for what I wanna do because I wanna be towing trailers. Uh, nothing like a fifth wheel or anything like that, but I definitely wanna have a trailer in case I need a car. So if you guys are familiar with diesels or know any 
anybody that is familiar with diesels or has a diesel a company that deals with these trucks then let me know uh, send me an email because I would love to do a collaboration on something with this truck I, I just I love it so much because other than the Mercedes this is my daily driver I love the fact that it has limo tint so I can keep cool in these really hot Florida months because even though you guys are getting ready for fall I'm still in 90 degree heat and the sun it's like right there it's it's yeah it's right there but now I know what you guys are thinking where are the cars that are supposed to be here I mean my driveway usually is filled to the brim with cars but now I only have my truck here and cars are nowhere to be seen well let me show you this ladies and gentlemen I present to you my new shop oh Yes, so I finally got a shop. I am no longer gonna be doing work at my house Well, I'm gonna be doing work at my house just for a little while longer But I finally have a place to call home for all my DIY stuff for all my wrenching madness And would you take a look at this? This is 5,200 square foot of pure well, it's pure nothingness now, but it has insulation everywhere, so you can actually hear me talk. It's not really boomy in here, and there is plenty of room for everything. We have a bathroom, and that's about it. So this is a brand new construction, so new, in fact, that I don't even have the water or electricity hooked up. I am the very first tenant here, and I can't wait to make this place my own. Now, this has uh, concrete floors. Maybe I'll do some epoxy. If you guys uh, know of any companies that uh, do epoxies, I'd love to hear from them. Uh, I have some uh, ideas for lighting, even though there are some LED lighting options over here. I don't think that's gonna be enough, so I'm gonna put some lighting over here uh, on the sides. And I'm gonna have lots of goodies like welders, lifts, and uh, we're gonna see if we can get some maybe tire changers and uh, balancers and all that stuff just to make sure that I can get everything going that I need to get going. So right here is where I want to build an office section and this is where I need your help. Uh, if you guys have any experience in carpentry or anything like that, I need the help of somebody that can build me something um, up to code. I have no problem trying to build it myself, but I need, I definitely need the help of somebody because uh, otherwise I'm not gonna know what I'm doing. But I'd love to have an office space right here just so I can have a podcasting place, a place to edit, and a place where people can maybe lounge and chill out when there's a lot of wrenching going on and you need some place to decompress. Man, I cannot, I am, I'm so excited. I'm at a loss for words. So another big thing is that there are two big bay doors here. Uh, which means that I can now have a trailer. I could just put a pull up a trailer here and unload anything I need. Oh. Also, there are uh, a lot of car shops around here. So we have some modified uh, cars over there, we have modified cars over there. There's there's a lot of really cool, really loud projects going on. But uh, this this bay, I'd love to do something where. I maybe put a trailer here, or maybe in time, maybe I'll put a dyno here. So this would be the perfect spot. Uh, the cars would just scream, uh, and all the exhaust would go outside, and it would be it would be great. Now, this is not going to be an air conditioned space. I don't think that uh, I can afford air conditioning on this big of scale, but I think that uh, a few. Well-placed fans should do the trick because right now it is 90 something degrees outside, but in here it's it's not exactly it's not exactly cold, but it's fine. It's uh, it's definitely manageable and I think with a nice breeze we should be okay. So since you guys might have noticed that there are cars in this garage already, I'm going to start from left to right. This is my 2000 Mercedes-Benz S500 and it is well it's been my daily driver for a number of years before I got my newer S-Class and this has a blue steel plastic dip job I think it might be steel blue instead of blue steel blue steel is a Zoolander thing uh, this has a full actual OEM AMG kit uh, it has some AMG replica 19 inch wheels and it has an AMG exhaust that has been custom grafted uh, for the car you can actually see the exhaust tips down here they look really good and it also has a tow hook because as you know i took this car and all my belongings here to florida from new jersey and i towed it uh towed all my stuff behind this car it was actually a pretty funny sight to see this thing looks amazing i i love the look of these cars i think they aged very very well it's a little bit dirty on the inside but it has a full s600 interior it has all the options 
Uh, it is all black, black leather, and it's it's in it's in decent shape. I'm not gonna say it's perfect shape. Full electric seats in the back, heated and cooled. Alcantara headliner, and uh, you have a uh, window um, net and all that stuff. It's it's really cool. It's really cool. I love this car, and it's all awesome. Uh, one thing is, you can see right there. There's a blemish because I'm such a dummy that uh, I put some gas in and the gas overflowed and when gas hits plastic dip it just becomes this runny mess. So this ha would have to be redone. I'm sure you can put some uh, some dip dissolver or some uh, some acetone or something and then just go over it again with uh, some plastic dip. They have that same color and it should be okay. Also, this is not in the plastic dip. This is actually in the paint. The paint started to bubble up right here, so that might need to be addressed. But again, daily driver duty. Now on to this. This is my 2004 Bentley Continental GT. I got it from Tyler Hoover, and it needs a little bit of work. I mean, when I mean when I say a little bit, I I I, I mean a lot of bit. So uh, this was a a failed. Not, not even a failed, it, it's like just a given up project by Tyler. And right here you can see the remnants of the tape I had because this window, the regulator actually broke. So I have a kit to fix that. And uh, other than that, this is really well put together. I mean, I am very impressed by how this Bentley drives and it does drive. Now, the engine is the problem in this car. And let's let's take a look. Let's see if the engine even starts. Okay, it's a good sign, the light's still on. So if we can maybe try to start it, I think you'll hear what the problem is. And the key is on the left, as it would be, because nothing makes sense in Bentleys. And the alarm goes off, <laughs> and the alarm turns off, okay. All right, turn that off, and there we go. A lot of beeps coming from this car right now. Now, if you take a look, the cluster is super dim. There's a bunch of weird uh, codes on there, and the car is shaking just a bit. I know you guys can't can't see, but it's yeah. You can see the RPM kind of going up and down, and it definitely feels like it's down on power. It feels like it's only running on half of the 12 cylinders. But everything here works as it should. You have the uh, climate control here. You have what's a really cool feature, the uh, spoiler in the back. If I press this button, you can see this go up. <laughs> it's pretty cool. And then that just goes down in like three steps. Also, the back seats are taken apart. They're actually right here uh, because that's the only way to get into the trunk um, when the battery's dead and the battery died and there are two batteries in this car, but everything else works. The AC is a little bit weak, but uh, other than that, uh, the electronics are pretty solid. It's just that engine. That engine is not, like I'm, I'm full throttling it right now. It should not be that weak. So that engine, I believe, needs to be replaced. Pull that. What's cool is that the pull is right here. This is supposed to have a Bentley symbol, but it doesn't. Also, fun fact, if you pull this on a hot day, this is scalding hot. So uh, that's an extra added incentive to buy a Bentley. So take a look at this. This is a very, very dirty Bentley six liter twin turbo W12. So this is like a VR6 uh, stapled together with another VR6 from Volkswagen. And they use a lot of Volkswagen components because this is essentially a Volkswagen Audi Group car. Uh, this is um, not running all that well. I think one bank, I think this bank might have low compression and also one of the turbos is busted, so uh, why not? But this spent some time in Russia, uh, which is near and dear to my heart, but you can see that it wasn't taken care of very well. I mean, you can see that a lot of the stuff is just corroded, needs to be refurbished, and this engine needs to come out. But in order for the engine to come out, it can't come out like this, it has to come out like that. So I need to undo all the bolts and then have maybe a two post lift and then lift the body up and the engine will uh, remain there with the entire subframe. So this is <laughs> a bit of a project. Hopefully it takes uh, about a weekend or something. It's gonna take longer than a weekend, but uh, who knows. It runs drives now. Uh, it can run, but uh, it just it's not, it's not the Bentley that I want. 
Uh, so we're just gonna get that done in some time uh, after the Supra. But um, in between then, I wanna get to that. This is my SL55 AMG, and you guys have been requesting that I do more videos on this car, and I really, really want to. Um, it's just that I have my Lamborghini and Super to do, so uh, after that, we're gonna get to this. And I don't think we need that much work, because uh, other than the manual swap, which is the bulk of the work, this car is done. I mean, I do have a new bumper and, and uh, front and rear that uh, is gonna go on, and I do have some new wheels that I want to put on here, but other than that, it's a very, very good uh, example of what this car can be. Now, I am going to do the very first manual transmission to this car. Uh, it's going to have a six-speed transmission from a BMW 5 Series uh, 530 diesel, and it's going to run pretty, pretty darn good. I have my work cut out for me, but uh, I just bought a book called The Car Hacker's Handbook, and it tells me how to basically re-engineer the CAN bus system in this car so I can hack it, essentially, and uh, make it think that it has an automatic transmission when it really doesn't. Uh, another option would be me going standalone on this car, uh, having a standalone ECU, but that is very expensive. It's like $8,000. I don't want to spend that on this car, especially because we're going to try to get this all done on the budget. This is the cheapest one after all. I bought this for $8,900. But uh, that is enough of that car. This thing runs and drives perfectly right now. It actually has 550 horsepower, has a pulley in tune from VRP. If I don't have a daily driver uh, on hand or I don't want to dri drive whatever I have daily, this is the uh, second or third daily driver. But this thing is never going to be a daily driver. This is my, wait, no, this is not a, this is not a Supra. <laughs> no, this is my 1995 Dodge Viper RT10. And uh, it has seen better days, but also seen worse days. It ain't bad. It's not bad at all. Because uh, even though this thing looks rough, Check out all the spare body panels I got. I have a hood and some fenders and stuff. So this car, instead of needing a ton of mechanical work like that Bentley, this needs a lot of body work. So I'm thinking since everything is removable, I mean, everything is removable. We have the sport roof that's removable. We have the uh, quarter panel that's removable, the doors, the hood, uh, even that rocker panel that is all able to be taken off. Uh, I think it's gonna be a good thing to just take this to the body shop in pieces and have them do their magic there. Or, worst case scenario, I can always paint it here. I can always make a, uh, a paint booth, but to be honest, I don't want to mess up my brand new shop with a bunch of overspray. So let's take a look at what this car has in store. And also, let's see if it starts. So the key fob has an unlock and lock button and also a trunk, which doesn't really do anything because there's no door handles on this car at all. Uh, you have to actually reach in and open it. Uh, where is it? Right here. That's how you open it. That's the official way of opening the car. And there are no windows at all. There's just a little track that you can put in some plastic windows. So they have thought of everything. This is uh, its a quite cozy place to be. It's, it's not really uncomfortable, but it's not comfortable either. So if you take a look at this, no windshield. Uh, so I have to get one of those. Those are probably very easy to find, not. So let's crawl right in here. And all right. So first things first, my feet are to the left, like the extreme left. Uh, so this is the center and <laughs> my, <laughs> my right foot on the accelerator pedal is where the brake should be in most cars. So let's, let's see if we can start this up. It has a six speed manual, uh, Tremec T56, and uh, has a Chrysler radio that uh, does not work, but it has all these really, really cool gauges. So let's see if it starts up. I don't know if it will, but um, it is a Dodge product from the 90s, so it should be pretty reliable. So clutch in. All right, that's a good sign. And... <laughs> oh, yeah. And I like this uh, arcade-looking steering wheel. The horn does not work. That's okay. But take a listen to that exhaust. They have five cylinders on that side and five cylinders on this side, and they don't meet up at all, which gives it this kind of like angry UPS truck sound. <laughs> all right, that's enough of that. This thing, 
thing runs a little rich. Also, for those of you worried about me revving it cold like that, don't worry, it's, it's a Dodge, it has an agricultural V10. It's pretty much built for this stuff, you know? Just uh, put that thing in a tractor, it'll do the same thing. Uh, yeah, I'm just kidding, but uh, this car is gonna be a lot of fun. I can't wait to get started on this. Uh, I might do this one and the Bentley at the same time because uh, I think this is not gonna be as such such an extreme build as like the Lamborghini or any other build. Uh, I think these will be relatively quick. Don't quote me on that, but that's what I think. Now, if we go over here, this is not my car. Uh, I kind of wish it was, but then, you know, eh, I think I have too many cars as it is. So this is my friend Andrew Howell's Mini, and uh, we are currently undergoing a, uh, we're, well, we're doing a new channel, and it's gonna be called Wrench Every Day, and we're gonna be doing a series uh, you guys might have heard of on my Jalopnik channel, uh, on my Jalopnik articles, uh, when I used to write there, called Art of the Flip, and this is gonna be the first candidate. Now, this was, this is still Andrew's car. Uh, it's his personal car, it used to be his daily driver, now he drives a Focus ST. This is a Mini Cooper S, uh, has a turbocharged engine, and it has a bunch of mods. The problem is, Andrew can't really sell this. Uh, it's too loud, it's fast, it's fun to drive, but there's a bunch of check engine lights and uh, it's, it's just not very sellable. I think it would be a lot more sellable if it was bone stock. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna unpimp this car. We have all the parts over there. We have the wheels and the headlights and, and the stock cats and all that stuff. So we're gonna be unpimping this car on the Wrench Everyday channel and that's gonna be coming up uh, in a few weeks. So we're gonna get this thing looking fresh because it's gonna go up for sale at the end of the series and uh, hopefully, we make a little bit of profit on it. So uh, stay tuned for that. So I'm just gonna lean on my Bentley here. Uh, it seems fitting because this used to belong to Tyler Hoover of Hoovy's Garage. I bought another one of Tyler's cars and you guys might know about it. It is a 1995 F355 Ferrari and it looks, it looks pretty good. I mean, it used to look pretty good. Uh, the story with that is that it burnt down. He had the car for a while, it was a dream car of his, and he drove it for about a thousand miles, uh, stress-free and, and didn't need anything, and then he gave it to Parker from Vehicle Virgins, and through no fault of Parker's own, the car went up in flames. I believe it was a fuel line that went up. Uh, it's a very, very common thing for the Ferraris. I believe they had a recall on it. Uh, it might have been that. I'm not sure what it was, but uh, I'm definitely gonna have to do some digging to see what happened. But the car looks like a burnt piece of toast. I mean, it looks really, really horrible. Uh, Tyler has done a video on it and the cat's out of the bag because I already told everybody on Instagram uh, about the car. So uh, I didn't want to keep anything from you guys. When I get the car here, what I'm thinking of doing is taking off that spider roof because I'm not a fan of how the spiders look. I think they, they I'm with Doug DeMuro on this. I don't think the lines of the car lend themselves well to a convertible. So what I'd like to do is a hard top conversion. I'd like it to look like a Berlinetta. And I'm not sure that anybody has ever done this. Uh, it's not gonna be a uh, convertible anymore. It's not gonna have a removable anything, but uh, I want it to have an OEM looking uh, hard top roof. So it looks like a Berlinetta and maybe even the F355 Challenge. I'm also gonna be uh, rebuilding the engine or rebuilding what I can from the engine because as you know, that car was in a fire and uh, it was in the engine bay. So I'm not sure what is actually usable on that. Uh, I'm also gonna be rebuilding the interior and all that stuff. That's gonna be a lot of fun. Uh, there's gonna be a lot of discovery and a lot of late nights, but uh, hopefully you guys like the result. So now we come to the question portion of this video and you guys have asked a lot of questions on my Instagram. Uh, I will have all that stuff in the link below. But uh, Mark11077 asks, Tavarish, how do you support yourself seriously? Do you have enough followers on YouTube to make money? Do you have a website that sells stuff? Do you have sponsors who pay you? Do you make do you make money on when you sell your builds? Please tell us, do you have an inheritance? Uh, no, I do not have an inheritance. Um, the only way I make money is from YouTube. Uh, it really is just that simple. Uh, you make money on YouTube views. Uh, I do have sponsors uh, that do pay me, but every time I have a sponsored video, I let you guys know, and you guys can clearly see if it's a sponsored video. Like this one, this one is a sponsored video. Dollar Shave Club paid me to do that promotion, but I use their stuff, and uh, I only work with companies where I actually use their products. Uh, so it makes sense for me to do it. It makes sense for uh, you guys to support the channel. Uh, by buying their stuff, so it's a win-win. Um, but uh, that's the only way I can afford these cars. Honestly, I don't go out, I don't drink, I don't uh, 
smoke. I don't do, <laughs> I'm pretty boring. I'm a pretty boring person. The only thing I do is spend money on cars. And uh, my house is full of car parts. And the only thing I do for myself is go on vacation, but I save money. So um, yeah, other than that, that's the only way I make money. And what you see right here, that's, these, these are my nest eggs. That, that, these are my investments. Uh, I don't have any other, uh, any other method. Um, I do sell shirts, but uh, everything, all the profits go to charity. So um, that's it. All right, so Abdilo04 says, how much horsepower are you thinking of putting in the Supra? Uh, the Supra is gonna have, I wanna say around 600 horsepower uh, to the wheels on a dyno jet. I still am gonna have the stock engine in there, but the stock short block, uh, the heads and uh, all that stuff is gonna get upgraded. So uh, that's gonna be a lot of fun. Um, Alexis Kreps says, best student car under a thousand euros for 16 year old. Uh, I'm not sure what is available in Europe, but I'd say uh, the best car is something economical, uh, something that is, dare I say, boring, something that will get you from point A to point B, and something that you can, well, it isn't gonna take you uh, a long time to repair, and it isn't gonna cost you an arm and leg to repair. So say a Honda, Toyota Corolla, uh, something like that. In Europe, I know they have a lot of uh, Peugeots and, uh, and things like that, but I'm not too into, uh, I'm not too onto that uh, whole scene, so I think that's probably your best bet. Small hatch uh, in Europe, you probably get away with the diesel. Uh, those are really, really cheap to uh, to run, and also insurance. Uh, so when you're when you're young, your insurance is going to be super high. So uh, keep that in mind. But uh, I'd say a small, like a Honda Civic, or just a small hatchback, just to get you uh, from point A to point B. All right. So the twenty something says. I'm in the market for a project car, uh, build nothing too fancy or expensive, decently maintained, but something with a ton of aftermarket mods available for it. Narrowed it down to a 300ZX, but a lot of NA 300Z owners told me to just go with a 300ZX twin turbo model. What's your opinion on these? The ZX 300ZX uh, twin turbo is a good car. Uh, it's one of the Japanese halo cars, like a Supra 3000ZT um, RX-7, however, they are very hard to work on. If you have to do anything with the turbo, it's an engine out. Uh, it is not the most reliable thing in the world. Uh, I know they did have some issues with their engines. And to be honest, the engines don't really output that much power. I mean, you can you can get, I wanna say like double the stock horsepower if you up the boost and you do uh, some turbo mods and stuff like that. But I think the better value is just an older 350Z. If you get like an 03 or 04 350Z uh, manual, that's gonna be a way better platform because then if you wanna do turbo, you can. If you wanna do just an intake and exhaust, you can get more power than you would uh, a 300ZX twin turbo stock. And also it looks a lot better. I think uh, the parts availability is a little better and um, you'll get more street cred. I, I and not have to worry about 90s uh, safety standards and all that stuff. It is a relatively new car. So I think that is what I would do. Uh, I would probably do a 350. Um, around these parts, they are cheap. I mean, you can probably find a 350Z for around less than five grand. So um, I know you can get a really haggard example for like 2,500, but I don't think you want those. Those probably need engine work. But uh, you can get a running driving car for five grand. I think you can do a lot less, you can do a lot worse than a used 350Z. So that's my advice. So that's gonna be it. I hope you guys liked it. If you'd like to ask me some questions, you can do so. Links below to all my email and Instagram and all that stuff. You can check it out. Um, I love talking to you guys. You guys are just the best. If you'd like to buy a shirt, you can do so. Link below at the Teespring store. All the profits go to charity. Also, you definitely should subscribe to the second channel because that's where we're gonna put all the Wrench Everyday stuff. That's where we're gonna have that car over there. That's where we have my podcast, Car Guys Talk with Andrew how and uh, that's where we're gonna have a lot of fun as well and also I'd like to thank today's sponsor Dollar Shave Club they are great and uh, also they make me look a little well a lot less scruffy so uh, until next time this is me telling you that on cars like all of these with this awesome shop you guys need to wrench every day